Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about the first generation model of currency crisis. A currency crisis basically occurs when a country's currency experiences a sudden and significant decline in its exchange rate value, often leading to a loss of confidence in the currency and the financial system. There are several generations of the currency crisis model, but today I'm going to discuss only the first generation of currency crisis model. Here are the contents of uh, this video. Let's begin with an introduction. Currency crises are significant events in the world of economics and uh, finance. They can have far-reaching consequences on countries and the global economy. Today, I will explore the underlying assumptions, the causes, and the concepts that are important to understand and the criticism associated with currency crises. Moving on to assumptions, these are the fundamental beliefs or ideas that underlie our understanding of currency crisis. These assumptions shape our perspective on the topic. Now let's explore the causes of currency crisis. These are the factors that trigger these events. We will look at real world examples and historical cases to illustrate what leads to the currency crisis. In this section of key concept, I will explain some fundamental terms and theories associated with currency crisis. Understanding these concepts is crucial for the realization of our uh, complexities of this topic. Criticism. Finally, we will discuss criticisms of the prevailing ideas that regards to the currency crisis. Every concept has its critics and it's essential to examine alternative viewpoints and counter arguments. In this introduction part, here are several uh, main key points of the first generation currency crisis model. First point is currency crises are historically significant economic events. It basically means that currency crises are not small problems. They are big deals in the world of money and economics. They have happened in the past and they have had a huge impact on countries and how they manage their money. First generation model basically emerged in the 1970s some clever people came out with ways to help us understand why this currency crisis happened. We call this ways or ideas, first generation models. They assume fixed exchange rate and rational investor behavior. These models start with a couple of important assumptions. First, they think that value of money doesn't change very often. It is fixed. Second, they believe that People who invest money are pretty smart and make sensible choices. Rational expectations leading to speculative attacks. It means, um, rational expectations basically means that people try to predict what's going to happen with their money in the future. Sometimes they are, these predictions make them nervous, so they quickly trade or sell their money. Again, these models uh, form the foundation of understanding the currency crisis. These clever ideas from the 1970s are like the base of a big building. If we want to understand why currency crisis happen, we must start with these ideas. Next, uh, I'm going to talk about the assumptions of the currency crisis, first generation currency crisis model. First assumption is perfect competition in the economy. It basically means that uh, in an idealized market structure where several specific conditions are met, and it is also characterized by a large number of buyers and sellers, homogeneous products, etc. Domestic and foreign goods are perfect substitutes. It means that products made within a country and those made in foreign countries are so similar that consumers consider them to be identical. Perfect capital mobility. It refers to a situation where financial resources such as money or investment can move freely between different countries without any restrictions. Uncovered interest parity and purchasing power parity, PPP, always holds. UIP is a theory suggesting that interest rate differentials between two countries should be equal to the expected change in exchange rate between their countries between their currencies in a perfectly competitive financial market with perfect capital mobility, EIP would always hold. 
Purchasing power parity uh, posits that over time exchange rates should adjust to ensure that identical products should have the same price when converted to a common currency. Here are the main causes of the first generation currency crisis model. First cause is speculative attacks. It occurs when investors believe that a currency will be devalued in the future. So they sell the currency in the anticipation of the devaluation and causes its value to drop and leads to a self-fulfilling prophecy. Second cause is monetary policy. If the monetary policy is loose, meaning that excessive money supply is here, it can result from central banks attempting to finance government deficit, leading to a currency depreciation and ultimately leads to the crisis. Loss of investor confidence. If investors doubt that the government's ability to maintain the exchange rate peg or manage economic stability is impossible, they may withdraw their money and thus leading to currency crisis. Here, uh, we are at the position of explaining the first generation currency crisis model in more detail. Here, we have assumed that money demand is assumed to be fixed and at some constant value as well as the exchange rate. Money market is in continual equilibrium meaning that money demand and money supply is equal, which is indicated by equation one. Here, MTD is the log of money demand and MTS is the log of the fixed money supply. Here, we also assume that uh, real money supply is inversely related to the domestic interest rate, which is indicated by the equation two. Here, PH is the log of the domestic price level and IH is the domestic interest rate. Again, uh, the log of the money supply uh, is given by the log linearization of the domestic credit and foreign exchange reserve, which is indicated by equation three, where we have written MTS is equal to DT plus RD. Here DT is the log of domestic credit and RD is the log of the inverse component of the monetary base. Here we also assume that uh, the exchange rate uh, follow PPP so that R is equal to PH minus P. where R is equal to the log of the exchange rate and P is equal to log of price levels. EIP is assumed to hold at all time. So we can write it as IH is equal to IF plus del RE. Where I is equal to home and foreign interest rate and del RE is equal to the expected rate of depreciation. As we have uh, assumed that money demand is constant, so any increase in domestic credit will, as in the monetary model, lead to a fall in the reserves of an equivalent amount, mainly the rate of fall of reserves indi indicated by R dot is same. So the rate of increase of domestic credit is equal R dot is equal minus mu, which is indicated by equation six. Finally, uh, we assume that exchange rate R is fixed and del R is equal to zero. Then, then we can say that IH is equal to IF and Foreign price level PF is equal. PF is also fixed. So after algebraic manipulation, we get R is equal to DT plus RT minus PF plus sigma IF. So how we can interpret this equation? We can interpret this equation in the following way. If we assume that PF and IF is fixed, so a increase in domestic credit DT will lead to a fall in the uh, foreign reserve RT and money supply will remain unchanged. So it is quite clear that if foreign exchange reserves are falling at the same rate, the domestic credit is expanding. At some point, they will reach a critically low level. If the central bank announces that once reserves hit a certain level, they will abandon the fixed exchange rate. Here we can uh, show the first generation currency crisis model with the help of a graph. The Red horizontal line uh, shows the fixed exchange rate and the upward sloping blue line showing us the shadow exchange rate. Here the speculators uh, do not see any profit as long as fixed exchange rate is greater than shadow exchange rate. They will uh, force a profit only if shadow exchange rate is greater than the fixed exchange rate, which is uh, the point uh, right toward the intersection of these two curves.
And lastly, uh, we are ready to discuss the criticisms of the first generation currency crisis model. First criticism is simply simplistic assumptions. Critics argue that first generation models often rely on oversimplified assumptions such as fixed exchange rate and uh, rational behavior. Second criticism is failure to uh, predict real world events. These models have faced criticisms for their inability to predict or explain some significant currency crisis such as 2008 financial crisis and European debt crisis. The last criticism is it ignores heterogeneity. These models often assume that all investors or market participants are the same, ignoring the heterogeneity of investors and their differing objectives and strategies. So thanks for watching this video. If you find this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content. Your comments and feedback mean a lot to me.